What's up, everyone? My name is Dre Man, and can I get a year? Giggity. Gimbals. Yeah, I said it. Giggity. Gimbals. In this day and age, many people feel like in order to be a respected filmmaker, you have to have these cinematic shots in everything that you do. So what do they do? They run out and they buy the cheapest or most affordable gimbal that they could possibly get. Now, don't get me wrong. I am a person who has used gimbals. I am a fan of the Ronin M. I am a fan of the Ronin S. Um, I'm also a fan of the Zion Cranes V1, V2, and uh, 2. It's kind of confusing, because V1 and V2, anyway. I love these things. I think these tools are incredibly important to independent filmmakers who don't have the type of budget to lay down a dolly track in the middle of the street in New York City. This is a great substitute. My biggest gripe with the usage of these tools is that they're used for every single thing. Filmmakers aren't really taking risks. They're not saying, hey, you know what? Okay, let me shoot handheld. Okay, let me get a glide cam and shoot that way. Uh, they're just saying, I'm gonna slap this camera on a gimbal and I'm gonna run around in circles and I'm gonna pray I get the best shot possible. And unfortunately, that's not my favorite thing to do. I am a fan of using conventional ways as well as the new school ways. This is a tip that I picked up from Jake of Owens of the Buff Nerds and I decided to start shooting more shots handheld and if I needed to shoot something that was really cinematic and flowy like then I would use a gimbal but setting up for a shoot the gimbal would not become my main tool of choice. The types of things that I do own, I have here a glide cam. Doesn't get much use for me. Uh, my boy Lou Dynamite gave this to me. I honestly need to practice more with this. I don't think I um, have mastered this enough to give anybody tips on this. And when I say I don't think I've mastered it, I, I don't think I've used this at all, all right? As you all know, I shoot with an A6300 and that is a small form factor camera. The sensor is right by your hand. It's very lightweight. I'm not sure how much the camera weighs exactly, but even when I slap my 24 to 70, which happens to be my favorite lens, and I'll get to that in another video. When I happen to slap that 24 to 70 onto it, it still doesn't add enough weight to help stabilize the camera. Now, this camera does not have in-body stabilization, but it does have lens stabilization, but it's only with native lenses, and I don't use native lenses with this camera. So what did I do? I custom built my own rig. This is just the skeleton of it. Uh, there's more stuff that I add to it. I add my A6300, my small HD monitor, which I'm using as a viewfinder right now, and I and then my lens and my adapters and etc. And it does add a little bit more weight. I'd say it gives me about five pounds of additional weight. Many people do not like shooting like that because we live in a run and gun society and you wanna be able to be as agile, performance savvy as possible. But for me, this gets the job done. I, I even throw my follow focus on this from time to time if necessary because I try to avoid having my hand touching my lens because once again, the purpose is to keep my hands away from the sensor, move the sensor as far away from my body as possible. Um, I think in the future I am gonna add some some handles, maybe some, uh, I think they're called Ari Rosetta handles that kind of like sit out here, um, a shoulder pad, but right now I'm rocking some weights on the back of my cheese plate. These weights come from this glide cam that I have over here, which is crazy. I have a, I have a small HD a cage with a small HD top handle, uh, 15 millimeter bars, and this small HD uh, camera plate right here holding everything together. Back here on my cheese plate, I, like I said before, I have three, maybe four weights, gaff tape down. Um, just to give some back weight back there. And when I go out on my shoots, I, you know, I get busy. This is, you know, I keep this handle right here. So I have three points of access. I have one up here, one right here, and then back here, using my body back here, just so I can get those shots and those motions. Having my small rig HD, having my small HD, uh, monitor right at the top gives me the ability to monitor shots because the a6300 does not have an articulating screen I'm unable to pop it out and watch the scene So having that small HD up top works wonders if I have my follow focus on here I typically take this off and I put my follow focus on this side and I have two of these things. This is one and This is my second one which has a matte box on it uh, 
it's not as detailed as the other it's pretty simple now these are two amazing tools but these aren't something that i would use for every single shot i'd, I'd mix it up so these are for shots where I know it's not gonna require much movement for myself or my subject, so I'm able to just do light motion, especially for music videos, where you kinda wanna get that nice swaying feel to the music and, and, and make the audience feel part of the video. Now, if I have to run around and follow a subject behind them, and I'm gonna use a gimbal because it's gonna help me achieve that cinematic motion. You have to ask yourself this question. If you use a gimbal for everything that you shoot, and one day your batteries are dead, are you able to still accomplish the goals that you have of this project? If not, then you need to stop using your gimbal. I suffer from chronic headaches and I'm constantly popping Excedrins, constantly popping Excedrins. And recently I found out that my liver is uh, creating too much potassium. And by doing so, something has happened and yada, yada, yada. We're not gonna get all into that. And then my doctor said, stop using the Excedrin, use a smaller dosage. I promise the headaches will go away. And I decided to use the smaller dosage because, I mean, it's my doctor. And she was right. Because I stopped using the Excedrin, I was able to still get rid of my headaches and still get the job done, and that's pain relief. You as a filmmaker, if you do not have access to a gimbal, are you really able to get the job done? Are you using the tool or is the tool using you? So many brands have put out different types of motorized gimbals. We have the Movi, we have DJI, we have Zion, and the list goes on. And they've also begun to put out these pistol grip single-handed cranes as well. And people are flocking to it because they're, they're looking for all of these cinematic shots. But I think the cinematic shots start within you. DSLR Shooter, if you ever check his channel out, he has like, 100,000, maybe two, 300,000 followers. He once said that he refused to upgrade from his T3i because he felt like he didn't get the best out of it yet. So he was gonna continue to push himself until he got the best out of that camera. And I would like to say the same thing to you. Before you run out and you buy a gimbal, you buy uh, you buy your Ronin, you buy your, your Zion Crane, you buy your Movi, whatever it is that your wonderful dreams aspire to have, get the best out of your handheld shooting. Get the best out of your glide cam because these things are just tools to ultimately help you get to the final product. I still slap my camera up on some sticks. It confuses the hell out of people. Like, why would I use a tripod during a shoot? We want movement. Sometimes the movement isn't necessary. Sometimes the movement should come from the person you're capturing and not from the person capturing the movement. Does that make sense to you? Because I hope it does. With that said, my name is Dre Manning. This is Dollar in a Dream. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment to the channel. And as always, nothing that I say matters if you don't get out there and apply it. Just get out there and shoot your shot.